So this motor right here is the AK7010. It's a quasi-direct drive motor that can feel like a spring in this MIT mode. So you can see here that I'm barely tugging on it and it springs back forward. I could adjust the different gain so that it behaves a little bit differently. So let's see what happens if I make this a little bit more stiff. So here I've increased the gains a little bit. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it springs a lot more aggressively. So this is because now you can imagine the spring constant is higher, so it wants to return to its original position a lot quicker. Now this right here is even higher, so you can see that it springs even much faster. You can see the oscillation, but now it's starting to feel a little bit harder for me to pull it back. Now with these gains right here, it's even higher, and you can see now it's much harder for me to push down, but look how quickly it bounces back. This is a very high KP, which means that it's generating a lot of force to return back to its original position. Now, what happens if I make this KP super low? You can see that now it becomes very sluggish, so I could actually push it way back, and it returns very slowly, but you can see how much difference this is if I have the gain super, super low. So they also have a damping factor. So right here, I've set the KP to be 1.5, but you can see how it's pretty responsive. You can see how it oscillates. But what the damping factor does, it'll kind of slow it down. So here, I've added some damping. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. You can see now it, you can see how it stops spraying back. Um, I'm gonna increase the KP a little bit here. And you can see that now it barely, uh, you can see it's not oscillating but it does spring back. So here I'm gonna adjust my KP to be a little bit higher. So it springs back pretty fast, but look at how much the dampening is happening. See how it just springs straight back to the position and doesn't oscillate anymore. So that's the damping effect. And it's actually very sensitive. If I just adjust the damping a little bit, you see a huge effect. And if the damping is too high, you can see when I push it back, it'll take a while to slowly return back to its position. So this is with very high damping. So damping, the idea of that is it kind of feels like your hand is in the mud. So it just, you gotta depend on your actual application to see what you wanna set it at. But you can see here, this is about damping of 0.1 and it just returns back to its original position. So previously I mentioned the term quasi-direct drive. For those that you don't know, it's typically if you have the gear ratio 10 to one or less. So this one specifically has a 10 to one gear ratio, but you can see how effortless it is to back drive this motor. So typically for things like quadrupeds or bipedal robot, humanoid robot, you typically want these sort of quasi direct drive actuators that have very low gear ratio so that you could actually easily back drive it such as what I'm doing right now. If you're looking to get any parts printed, make sure to check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. Just come here to CNC 3D printing, choose 3D printing, and super easy, you just drag in your parts, choose your quantity, material, color, and different things that you need like threads and inserts. Go ahead and fill that out and then submit your part for review. Okay, so here we are in servo mode. So previously the mode was called MIT mode. This one is servo mode where we get to control a uh, position and you could set a velocity cap. So here you can see, I'm just gonna oscillate it back and forth. So you can see it's rotating. This is at a relatively low speed right now, but I could also set this higher. You can see different things like the relative position. You can see the position error. So there's different things in the plot you could set. But here you can see if I speed it up a little bit, I'm going to move it back again. And you can see how much faster it moves. So it's going negative 360 to 360. Uh, if I speed it up even a little bit more, let's see how fast it could go. So you can see it's a lot faster. I'm going to ramp it up just a little bit so you can see it going even faster. That's pretty fast. I'm gonna go back again. <laughs> and here you can see I'm gonna, this is gonna be the max speed right now. I'm gonna move it back. You can see it's pretty responsive. So very good for its speed. So right here, this is in velocity control mode. So here you can see I'm um, setting at a velocity and you can see the motor is spinning. So I could slowly ramp this up and you can see it go faster and faster. I'm just gonna ramp it up slowly so it doesn't go crazy too fast. 
but here you can see it's a little bit faster. This is about 50% of the way. I'm just gonna ramp it up a little bit more. And notice how the motor is actually very quiet. I'm pretty impressed by the sound that it makes or the lack of sound actually. So it's pretty good how quiet these motors are. I'm gonna ramp it up even more now. This will go a lot faster. So when it's faster, you can hear some sounds, but you know, most of the time if you're using this for quadruped robots, you're probably not gonna move it that fast anyway. So let's go ahead and try to max out the speed and see what happens. Whoa, you can see this is very, very fast. Now you can hear some sounds, right? But again, for robotic actuator, especially for quadrupeds, like I said, you're probably not gonna run it that fast. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it backwards now just to kind of bring it back. But they also have current mode. So current mode is gonna do something similar, except you get to feel it. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. But I could set a specific current in amperage, for example. So if I go ahead and run this, so if it's too low, it won't move. So I just need to set something high enough for it to move. So this is at four amps. And if I just do something a little bit less aggressive, like two amps here. So even at two amps, it starts moving. Uh, if I do about one, let's see what happens. Just dragging the sliders here. So this is like 1.4 and It's a little bit dangerous to stop it, but ideally with current mode, if it's not too high, you could feel the torque as you're turning it. But with these screws, it's kind of hard to stop. So the main idea is you have your position, velocity, and current control modes, and you could choose which one you want to control the motor with. So yeah, back to this motor, you can see that these motors have, you know, you can see the mounting screws here. This is for the output. And you can see that there's also some holes here in the back. This is for mounting you could mount it to something that's stationary. And if you look in the back here, they have some connections. Um, currently connected, so it's a little bit upside down because of the cable length, but let me just unplug it real quick. But you can see what I have here is basically a USB cable, and they have this thing called the R-Link that goes to these connections here. So you can see these are, if I zoom in, you can kind of see it's hard to focus, but these are basically the CAN cables and the TX-RX. So this goes into here. So you can see here the RX-TX is the UART. We have the power and the CAN in and out. Because there's no outs, we only are using the CAN in here. And the power cable here this is a standard, you know, XT30 connectors that I've talked about on my channel, but and you can see that these are basically standard connectors. So when you purchase these motors, they come with it. So it makes it pretty easy for you to get everything up and running. So you can see the other cable here, it looks very similar. It's just uh, fewer connector pins, but you can see right here, this is basically how it looks like. And one thing to note too, is hard to show you how heavy it is, but this is actually a very lightweight motor, so it's actually very easy to get everything up and running. And real quick, I just want to let you guys know that I have a membership set up where you could be a robotic supporter, where you'll get loyalty badge next to your name, priority reply to comments, and members only poll on new video topics. You could also bump up to the robotics developer one. So what this one offers is going to be select access to deep dive videos on my coding and designing for my robotics project and get 30% off all course materials. Or you could join the robotics lead. So this is the highest tier. This one is going to have access to deep dive videos on all of my robotic project videos for the code and design. You get 50% off all course material get members only live stream and high priority content requests. And you get to submit questions to cover in deep dive videos. So make sure to check out these memberships and join the membership that's right for you.